Well, and Jeff Bowie's hi. around. Hi, so good to see you. And hi, John Bowie, you're the star today. And hi, Jane. <laughs> well, thank you. And Mohammed and Rich and Mohammed and my, oh gosh. All right, I'm going to officially begin this call. Actually, we have a couple of seconds. Now I'm officially beginning the call. Um, my name is Joan Bordeaux, and I am the co-leader of the membership committee for the Foundation for Climate Restoration. My co-leader, Melanie Trent, who is fabulous, and many of you know, cannot be on the call today. Um, and this is our founder series call, which we do once a month. So um, uh, what I would love is if all of you would put your cameras on and that those of you who were here for the first time, who've never been on um, a, uh, a community leaders call for F4CR or one of our founder series calls, if you would all come off of your uh, muted cameras, and, and if you, this is your first time, just put your hand up so we can give you an extra special, super duper welcome. <laughs> and, um, and whether you put your camera on or not, you could still raise your hand and somehow we'll, we'll feel it. <laughs> and um, what uh, I would really appreciate if you want to do this, is for everyone who's who was on one of our calls for the very first time, if you could put your name, your phone number, and uh, your email address in the chat so that we can let you know about future calls or future events, we would love to include you. That would really delight us. Uh, what I'm gonna read before we get into the body of this call is uh, the vision and the mission of the Foundation for Climate Restoration. So our vision is climate restoration by 2050 and that climate restoration by 2050 becomes the overarching goal of climate action by the end of the decade. And what climate restoration means is restoring the climate um, with CO2 levels below 300 parts per million, how we were back before the industrial revolution. And our mission is to generate the social license and political will to restore the climate. So I am uh, going to turn the call over to my colleague, Julia Dieter, who can introduce our speaker for today. Julia, please. Thank you, Joan. <laughs> Joan and I have been working together for probably 40 years, and it's fun to hear her turning things over to me. Um, I'm just really, really honored to have John Bowie here today. And I was reflecting on how I was going to introduce him. And uh, the first time I met him, he flew down from Seattle, from Washington State, to film. Peter's book had just come out. And for those of you who haven't read Peter's book, I highly recommend you get it. It's also in audio. It's hard to read the graphs on the audio, but, you know, if you're not a graph reader, your first round can be audio. Um, but he flew down here to film Peter. And I, I was just thinking, now, what kind of a documentary director maker of films would take something on that was so brand new as a concept of climate restoration. Now, you know, 
when great grand things are done, we look back and go, oh, well, yeah, of course. We look back. But what it took someone who is bringing something brand new into existence on a film that would be engaging and not only engaging, but activating for people, what kind of a filmmaker would step up to the plate for that? And also um, one that, uh, you know, a film that wasn't fully funded beforehand. And that, just to give you a little idea, that's John Bowie. He's, he took on uh, getting climate restoration across. And I'm just going to read you the, the mission of the Foundation for Climate Restoration one more time, because I have to read it about 10 times to get it. Climate restoration by 2050, that means that we'll have the quality of life on this planet that our grandparents had by 2050. 2050 is not that far away. And if you think about the kind of storms and everything we're having now, wow. And that our, our task, what we've taken on at the foundation is that climate restoration becomes the overarching goal of all climate action by the end of this decade. And John Bowie's work in making this film, which he'll tell you how it's how it's gone, um, making the film. That that test that that task is huge. Um, John's going to do his presentation, and then um, I'm going to ask him a, a few questions and open the floor then for your questions. And we'll see um, where we go with that. So with no further ado, John, it's all yours. Right, thank you. Well, that was quite an introduction. I appreciate that. Um, before I share a screen, I've got a bit of a, <clears throat> a slideshow and presentation to go through. I, I just want to say that in terms of getting involved with this, until I heard about Peter through Phoebe, my wife, that was working with uh, Peter, uh, before I heard about climate restoration, my assumption, like probably most of the rest of the planet, was that we've got a serious problem on our hands and there's a lot of negotiations going on about climate reduction and then there's backsliding, agreements are made, paper gets shuffled around the, the desk and, and that's it. I really wasn't aware that there was anything outside of that universe. And so reading about this, hearing about this, um, I, I guess it really was a a no-brainer in in terms of getting involved in a in a project like this and and learning more about it because the the one good thing about there's plenty of bad things but there's quite a few good things about being a filmmaker and one is that each project that you get involved in uh becomes a a whole new learning experience and this certainly fit that description um and just an, an observation listening to you reading out the mission statements again julia and and it seems to me already that what you've What's happened here with Peter coining the phrase or developing the phrase uh, climate restoration, that you've basically given survival a brand. Um, what we have now, I mean, the, the term climate restoration pretty much defines survival and um, it, it's becoming a brand. And a, a brand is really important because it's something, it becomes a go-to term that people just get. It almost becomes a rote in a way. But anyway, I'll uh, let me start sharing my screen. I, I do tend to ramble a bit, so I'm going to apologize in advance. Um, let's see if I can get this working. Folks, uh, if you haven't muted yourself, please do uh, until you're you're called on if when you have a question or something you want to share. I'm almost there. Mm-hmm. Great. Have you got, you've, you've all got the screen, have you? Beautiful. Great. Okay. So yeah, the company that I, I formed is Transmedia Vision and the, the kind of value line of that is engage and transform. And um, that's what I try and do with the, the information that I share that hopefully it's constructive, positive, has outcomes and um, can possibly be transformative. I'm a producer, writer, director, camera person, uh, 
actually do talk shows as well. So that's a, a fairly vertically integrated term for filmmaker, I guess. Um, the type of things that I've done, movies, concerts, documentaries, talk shows, and generally creating situations to provoke conversations that lead to positive change. Um, some of the people I've worked with, I've traveled with the Dalai Lama working with him. I've done live concerts with fairly big names, uh, documentaries on gender issues and homelessness, a lot of different social issues, um, talk shows. Um, during the, the start of the Oxycontin um, opiate addiction, where it really became big, I did a lot of talk shows with people, including um, family members that had lost their children to, to addiction. And um, I did, also did a lot of interactive um, engagement material over in the Middle East, creating uh, experiences in museums and science centers, because one great thing about museums and science centers is that if you create something experiential, there's more chance of people absorbing the information instead of watching it just on a straight screen. And then I've worked with yeah, presidents and Mandela. This is Tabo and Becky down here in terms of uh, doing a bit of tutoring in terms of presentation. Um, and here, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen on the right because of all my images, that's uh, that's my wife and co-producer of the project, Phoebe Barnard, who is an integral part of the, the film that we're gonna be talking about um, and also introduced me to Peter. This was actually, um, she'd recently uh, had a big science paper uh, published, uh, Scientists Warning Into Action. And this was a, a discussion about that paper. Okay. So I was approached about putting this film together or the idea came up and it was a mutual discussion that turned into uh, the idea of actually making a film. And what what did that look like? How, how were we even gonna uh, put a film like that together? What approach should be taken? And in many ways, the approach that I took to this are the type of the considerations that came up are not so dissimilar to um, even an organization like F4CR, how do we, come together, how do we make an impact um, in, in pulling people in? How do we retain those people? Same goes for a film. And this film started off as a film, um, but the trouble with um, films in particular climate films is they become so dense in, in, in content that we decided to turn it into four films. The crew that we put together um, wasn't the, the most difficult part. Uh, that didn't take too long. As you can see, some of the faces you may recognize there, Phoebe, Julia, uh, Peter. Um, Peter Coyote came onto the project thanks to um, uh, Carol England um, having an amazing uh, ability to talk people into things. And she talked uh, Peter Coyote into coming onto the project gratis. And he's he's been a, a significant part of the film. Um, so yeah, a lot of people involved in the crew and now we're just starting to work with a, a number of people uh, who are being ambassadors to us because making a film is a little bit like having a baby. It's it's one thing to have the child, but then you've got to start feeding it and figuring out how you're going to raise it and how you're going to present it to the world. And so again, Carol England, uh, Julia, Deidre and Carol Douglas are instrumental at the moment in, in working with us in um, spreading this film out there. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And there's a number of other people that I haven't added to this list. Um, so one thing about climate films that although they're well-intended, they, they're often very polarizing. They, they get people on one side or the other. There's a lot of finger pointing. And before the films even started, there's, yeah, there's a lot of, yeah, people are already listening to their own arguments and not really taking in the information on the film, which isn't gonna get us anywhere. And um, yeah, here's some images from a few climate films. Um, the other thing about climate films is that, and, and what's happening today is you'd, you'd think that as climate catastrophes become more covered and more common, um, that we become more sensitized to them. But in actual fact, I think really we're becoming numbed by them. Then I don't know how many videos I've seen on the internet that are really well intended, talking about climate catastrophe but it's just this montage at the beginning where you just you know you just want to end it all 
before it even gets to the main part of the information. And yeah, this is what we're seeing every day. I, I, I can't think of many days that I've turned on the news where there hasn't been a climate catastrophe story. So what do we do to, to change that? How can we make a story that's unifying, that's positive, not hopian, um, and is accurate and is about saving the climate in a constructive manner? And that was the, uh, that was the challenge. So these are some of the points that we were considering. The first thing, I, as always, is begin with the end in mind, and that is your audience. Why are you making this? Who are you making it for? Um, and that defines the, the approach to the actual film and the script and, and, and everything else, really. Um, so we approached policymakers. We included and interviewed policymakers. We included some scientists, even, believe it or not. Um, we had... Um, a lot of um, activists and people that we've that we've covered, um, a lot of innovators and financiers, people like uh, Brent Constance and many other people, and audience as well. And some of you may recognise yourself. This was from a <laughs> presentation that Peter gave in Petaluma a year and a half ago. Um, so the purpose of any media project really is to um, so I have to keep moving my pictures down because I can't read my my notes. Yeah. <laughs> so the purpose of a project really is to share information that has a positive effect and an emotional outcome, because it's the emotional outcome, I think, that starts to change people's behavior. Um, feed the soul and the mind in equal measure. It's really important to kind of really treat the left and the right brain equally when you're when you're sharing information. Statistics are really important, but they're just the bricks. Um, you need to personalize all those statistics and the cement that binds them is the stories that we tell. And um, mm. now if you can see this again, my picture gallery keeps on uh, covering up the covering up the images. Um, it's life that moves us. I, I wish it was statistics that moved us more, but it really is life. and having a statistic like two people that have been affected by a flood doesn't work until you see the, the broader context of that to take it in and understand it, humanize it. I don't know if you remember that terrible picture of um, during the, uh, the first evacuations that were happening in Syria, there were so many uh, refugees and there were just masses of statistics. And then one day on the front of the newspaper, there was a a picture of a father standing over his toddler son that had drowned on the beach. And that shifted uh, the dial significantly. It really made a difference. And it was just that one picture, despite the thousands of people that were appearing in the news as, as a statistic. But um, there's many other challenges. I'm sure you, most of you have probably seen this and Whenever you start talking about something or, or watch something to do with climate, all of a sudden there's a there's a thousand specialists mm -hmm. in the coffee shop or the or the audience, and people believe this. And one one of the people that we interviewed um, in the early days of the of, of the project around cognitive dissidence, um, Professor Leif van Boven was talking about the fact that they they did so much research on this and it wasn't the the quality of the information how accurate the uh, accurate the information was, how dynamic it was, it really boiled down to where that information was coming from uh, that decided whether people were going to buy what it was that you're selling or not. If it was on Fox News um, and you're a Fox person, you heard that, then you're probably going to believe that regardless of the information that is contrary to that. So um, one of the things that is really important in, in making a project or whether it's F4CR sharing information or uh, Phoebe and I making a, a four part series, the information that you put together has got to be simple enough that it can be shared and reshared. The number of times that I've heard somebody say, I saw this amazing thing last night and they start to describe it and they, they tail off. They've, they've been really impressed by what they've seen, maybe even moved, but they don't have the ability to pass that information on. Mm -hmm. And just as we talk about in the first episode of, of, of methane um, being converted to, to, to CO2 and water, 
um, it has to be a catalytic process. Otherwise, it's just not it's not going to work. It's got to keep doing it and doing it because one for one is, is just not going to move the needle. So your story needs form. You don't need to be a scientist, really. You need to understand the principles of it. And if, you know, they say that, what's that term? BS baffles brains. And you start to talk about climate or something and the person talking to you just suddenly starts throwing out facts and stuff that they've heard secondhand. I think it's really important for you to, to, to get down six basic points. You know, what is the issue? The climate's out of control. What's being done about it? Very little, a lot of negotiating and backsliding. So what needs to be done? We need climate restoration. Well, how does that work? Well, in, in a way, it's it's kind of mimicking nature, only on steroids. It's how do we activate that, accelerate that, and take it to scale? And what are the outcomes? And the outcomes are, as you say in your mission statement, get PPM down to around about 300 or below, and to a point where well, life can thrive again. And then say, and if you want to see the science to back that up, here's a page that's got links to the um, a lot of the graphs and stuff that you see in Peter's book and, and other research. And that's all it needs to be. You don't need to be a scientist. Other challenges in making the production audience attention span. We all, we all face that challenge. Uh, credibility, who's the people that we're covering? How do we get the content heard once we've made it? Zoom saturation. And I really appreciate everyone coming on Zoom to watch this. But uh, I, I think the virtual world that we grew into during COVID and beyond, you've got to have good content to get people to come along and, and take part in stuff. As I mentioned before, you really need clarity of that information. It, it needs to be simple, dealing with the principles of it, almost like an iceberg, the top visible section of the, the principles of it that you can explain and articulate. Underneath that resides all the science. And it has to be dynamic. It can't just be a, a film about a bunch of old gray men, older gray men like myself talking science. It's It's got to be out there. It's got to be dynamic. It's got to be visual. Attention span. Yeah, I mean, attention spans proportionate to the size of the screen. Um, I don't know if you can see down there, but, we, you know, there's short films for mobile phones. Um, you can get up to maybe an hour on a laptop or a movie on a home screen TV, but if you really want to um, get everybody captive to watch a whole movie, uh, a movie theater. So you've really got to be careful and strategic about looking at the content that you've got, the information that you want to share, and how best to present that. Um, again, if you look at something really zippy on TikTok, on a mobile phone, you get away with it. If you looked at that on a movie screen, you'd, you'd get migraine within about five minutes. It just doesn't translate. So you've really got to be cognizant about the medium that you're aiming for to, to share your information. And again, yeah, there's just so much information. That was just one of my photo feeds from um, a couple of years ago. It was, a, I think it was like two months or three months photo feed. Um, mm -hmm. Phoebe's hiding in there in a couple of places and my dogs, yeah. you name it, saturation. So, so this is, uh, here's a quick trailer. Our global warming to me is one of the two great existential issues facing humanity. The other one is nuclear power and weapons. So I'm really appreciative of the opportunity to read these scripts and help them get a larger purchase in the world. Are you ready? Okay. But amid all these ever-growing catastrophes, this is a story about how it may just be possible to repair a climate in freefall by removing the carbon dioxide and methane that are responsible for rising temperatures, sea levels, and disastrous weather events. This fundamental approach is referred to as climate restoration, and it involves a range of scientists based on how nature removes these two gases. Goals are essential. But to achieve them, we need to develop a shared vision of what the world could look like if we all work together, restoring the planet and climate. How does it make you feel reading that? It just reaffirms how close to the edge we actually are and how little attention goes into um, positive models. The fundamental job of the television news 
is to keep your eyeballs available to their advertisers. So to do that, every story is framed in the most exciting, dramatic way. You don't get a lot of good news because people don't remember it. So when I see this and when I read the script, I'm really glad to be participating in something that's going to make a balanced and positive view, explain the pluses and the minuses carefully. So, yeah, that was Peter just sharing a few thoughts on that and um, just like advertising and um, editorial. If uh, you see a, a glossy commercial, you, you kind of you may be impressed by it, but you may be a bit suspicious of it because of the money that's gone into it. But when you hear uh, somebody shooting from the hip, just sharing about why they're involved in something, I think it has a lot more weight. And uh, I, I think Peter's a good example of that in what he shared there. So the Climate Restorers, what we decided to do at the beginning was make four episodes and one episode, each episode would cover one of the four main areas of climate restoration that, that are included in, in Peter's book. Um, I'm sure I don't need to explain what climate restoration is to all of you. You probably know more about it than I do. Um, but we obviously focus on the two main uh, gases, um, CH4, methane, and, and carbon dioxide, and what are the best ways of, of removing that from the atmosphere. And the methods that we do focus on are methods that um, mimic nature, looking at the, me the methods that nature uses, but finding out ways to, to accelerate those. So we looked at artificial limestone manufacturing and a, a bunch of variants around that. Ocean iron fertilization, uh, ocean permaculture, um, and accelerated methane oxidation. Um, there's other peripheral and also other, sorry, other core elements that we cover, biochar, regenerative farming, and even direct air capture, which I, I guess most of us understand that direct air capture, whether it's in Iceland or the new one that they're, they're setting up in Wyoming is a, is potentially a big shiny thing that's, you know, I, I whether it's actually worth the money that's going into there, I, I, I don't know. If you look at um, fission and fusion, um, the amount of energy going into fusion and what comes out of it, they've only now just reached a point where it's kind of energy net. I don't know that they'll ever reach that stage with direct air capture, but I think all the sciences are worth exploring. I don't know that they're worth having the amount of money put into them that direct air capture's having, but making a film about Climate restoration would be like making a film about politics. We'd have to include Donald as well as uh, Joe. Um, so yeah, methane is the first one that we did. Methane is the hardest one. You can't smell it, you can't see it, and you convert it into something else that you're not supposed to have. So that was quite a challenge. Um, and it also, it, it almost feels counterintuitive in a way. We interviewed a lot of really amazing people in different countries. Renaud de Richter here, who did a lot of uh, work on, on methane. Um, and he talks in the documentary about the fact that it's 86 more times more powerful. So obviously, if you convert methane, in, methane into something that's 86 times less powerful, it's, it's kind of net positive. Um, we talk about the ice core samples over 800,000 years and the relationship between uh, CO2 parts per million and the temperature and the cycles that happened every, approximately every 100,000 years. Um, what was really important, and we've had two public movie theater screenings, is what we show in the documentary, what's happening in the world is happening in our own backyard. We live in the Pacific Northwest, so loss of snowpack and uh, loss of um, shortening spring times means floods, massive runoff of snowpack, and then drought in the summer, which affects water security, food security, creates crop failures, housing availability, people moving away from areas where the temperature's not viable anymore or where there's crazy fires, and that's pushing house prices up, and that's pushing the, uh, pushing the um, creating more pressure on homelessness. Constant floods, constant wildfires, we're all affected by this. It's its not a global distant concept at all. Uh, this is just a um, 
sequence that I filmed in our backyard. This was the Skagit River that uh, pretty much burst its banks uh, two years ago now. So the people that we connected with, there was we, we've interviewed, I, th I think about 40 scientists now, political leaders, business leaders, economists, farmers, activists, and we're still filming. We're about three quarters of the way through, through already. And generally speaking, we've really tried to get out there on location and film people to make it more captivating. But it's also about governance, it's about justice and equity inclu and inclusion. And we've got some wonderful voices from um, uh, First Nations, Native American people who clarify the, the, the fact that we really shouldn't confuse wisdom with intelligence. You really can't have one without the other. And uh, there's some people that say it far more eloquently than I do. Um, some of the countries that we've covered so far, Iceland, Germany, France, Denmark, Netherlands, Caribbean, Arctic Circle, Antarctica. Um, no, we haven't been to Antarctica. So <laughs> India, it's not on the schedule either. India, Pakistan, Uganda, Rwanda, UK. Uh, this is Sir David King that we interviewed in, um, in London at Cambridge. Um, this uh, Katie Ant Walter Anthony, uh, quite a famous um, methane scientist, just before she disappeared under the mud in Fairbanks, Alaska. This is down in the, the tunnels um, in Fox. Uh, this is all to do with the, the melting permafrost. Uh, this is at the aggregate um, factory, the aggregate plant in Pittsburgh, California, part of Blue Planet. Uh, this was in the laboratories. Uh, that's me freezing in Iceland, filming uh, the um, the geothermal power station that provides the power for the um, direct air capture place. This is in the Caribbean. This was to do with ocean permaculture. Um, yeah, the consequences. This was uh, me filming down in um, Fort Myers in Alaska, in um, Florida, just after the the hurricane that hit there. I don't know if any of you recognize uh, Chris Tucker there. And uh, Chris Tucker wrote uh, an amazing book, uh, Population of Three Million. And um, his main focus in, in that book, obviously, is population and um, the imprint that uh, such a big population of eight billion, billion has. So what are the outcomes of the film? We really want to create a clearer idea of the problems with people, help them with language um, so that they can share what they've learned to, to other people. We talk about what you can do. and you can't discount the small things because every day each of us has an effect on the climate in in the negative way. And so, you know, whatever each of us can do to, to slow that down is significant. And then the rest, I, I'm not going to talk about what your goals are in F4CR, but certainly whatever we can do to support initiatives around net zero and restoration is a plus. So what we did was when we finished the, the first round of shooting, we took the film to COP27. We presented um, at, um, yeah, in Egypt at COP27. And that was that was well received. Um, where we stand at the moment is that we've negotiated a deal with a broadcaster, um, with a distributor for global rights. And they're going to be selling the, the series to... Um, broadcast TV stations around the world. And then after it's been on broadcast TV, it would then go to a streaming service like an Amazon or um, a Netflix or something like that. We've got interest from a couple of companies. But what we've done is we've held back all the rights to movie theaters, to education and um, uh, institutional rights, which allows us to take the film city to city and almost have mini town halls and, and presentations because we need to get this information out as soon as possible. Um, it's a perishable good. Uh, what we have today is going to be slightly different from next year. The information is going to change and it's it's not that easy to keep re-editing. We Our very first presentation was to us in, in a stand-up comedy theater in Bellingham. Um, and the film went down really well there. We gave questionnaires out for people to comment what their thoughts were. It went down really well. We then, um, this was early in the evening, but we packed out a, a regular movie theater in, in Mount Vernon. 
And the way forward, what we're hoping to do is um, from here, we're going to Olympia um, in three weeks time to present at the um, at the Capitol, uh, Washington State Capitol, to a, a bunch of uh, senators and representatives. Um, San Francisco, Los Altos, we're hoping to, to present um, to uh, Stanford University and a bunch of other places here. So we're slowly putting these things in place together. Um, we're still funding the project, which is a challenge. And we're using uh, GoFundMe and we've set up a Patreon channel, which I'll talk to you a little bit more in a few minutes. Um, the, the films that we make are statements. They're four solid statements, but what we have is a conversation that's ongoing and ever-changing. So what we're doing is we're taking all the content that we've got because it's probably a 15 to one shooting ratio. In other words, one 15th of the material that we've shot ends up going in the film, but there's such good information. So we're starting to compile short, short films around every, anything from greenwashing to carbon credits to um, you name it, anything to do with the content that we've shot. And we'll start drip feeding those out over a period of time. And that type of content I think would be useful to organizations like yourself so that we, we, we keep interest going in the projects covering things like um, cognitive dissonance. Uh, Peter Coyote talking about why it's important for him as, a, as an eight-year-old person, what, what his investment is at this stage of his life. Uh, bottom right there, um, Jay Bowen, uh, who's a Native American elder, has some really interesting stuff to say about um, restoration. So in terms of foundation for climate restoration, I've I've done um, a kind of um, consulting, a strategic consulting for a lot of different companies and, and nonprofits and so forth. And I, I think that one of the important things to do is it, it's one thing to have information stuff, but it's really important to have community and the way to get that community to, to, to bond together is to share about yourselves. And um, I, I really would invite you all to certainly people on the board to share a 30 second video or something just on a mobile phone saying why i'm involved with this organization what gets me out of bed in the morning what i'm concerned about what what i'm fearful of what i'm what i'm hoping is going to happen in the future what and what what you feel good about just 30 second pieces and place those on your website on a gallery and people will come back to look at that and that will inspire other people to share information and um, I really think that would be to your benefits. And to achieve that, just uh, this was another presentation I did a while ago for a, a group of startup companies at, in Boston. But just get some simple things to put your cell phone on so it's not shaking all over the place. Um, you can get, you know, if you want to be creative, you can get a piece of green fabric and stick it behind you. And then you can start looking professional or different or just confuse people, um, but you can take it to a different level. Bear in mind here, this this shot of me here, this is what you get if you film yourself against a bright background, you're gonna become a silhouette. So always make sure that the light in front of you is brighter than the light that's behind you because there's nothing worse than, than doing a, a short piece from the heart that you share with somebody, but they're just kind of, off put by the, the technical quality of it. And with mobile phones or GoPros, I mean, it, it's so easy to get a, a professional looking video and sounding video um, and cross pollinate. I mean, this this image here was uh, when we recorded uh, Peter at the um, Patagonia store in, in Virginia, outside Washington, DC, and a really interesting location. Um, so a picture tells a thousand stories. Remember that in the imagery that you do and the information that you put on your on your website, um, people are moved by small things. It's almost like thin slicing. Just one small picture can can cover paragraphs and paragraphs of information when you're trying to make a point. Um, so as Einstein said, logical and information will you get you from A to B, but it's the imagination that's going to get you everywhere else. And you really need to inspire people when you're talking about something that you're
pa uh, passionate about climate restoration. So all of us, we've all got mobile phones and some form of connectivity on the web with laptops or, or phones. So you're all filmmakers. So um, let's get to work. <laughs> um, this is Transmedia. This is who we are. And we're still fundraising as you guys are. So that's part of what we're doing with our theatrical screenings that we have what we call friend raisers, where we invite people to come along, watch the film, and then we have a town hall event after it. The admission to the film is a kind of a suggested $10 donation, and that covers the projection and movie theater rental fees. And then uh, we go from there. But it's about creating a movement. You've you've created a brand already, so that's making life a lot easier for us. And um, it's about moving forward. Um, so yeah, that's 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 it, really. <laughs> thank, thank you, John. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I have a couple of questions for you. These are going to be the tough ones. Okay. Can I can I confer with anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I'm really fascinated. Year and a half, right? Yeah, Your yeah. Uh, emotional process and in terms of, um, well, you know, you know the movie The Alien? The Alien Ate Me. You know, I've known Peter for 35 years. But there was one evening when he showed me seven or eight years ago this these graphs, blah, 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 that we could restore the climate. And it ate me. It, it, it consumed me. My life was taken over. And I actually said to Peter, I'm on board 110% for the duration till we have this happen. And um, I'm wondering what, it's, what the process has been for you you know, you've you have spoken to a, a range of scientists all around the world, activists, everything. Um, how has the, the the possibility? In fact, for me, it's we're going to do it. I'm going to give everything to it, and you know, um, how has that impacted you as a human being? I mean, I know you're not the same. You you seem like you still have it together. You haven't fallen apart, as I can tell, in the year <laughs> and a half. But maybe I'd like to know how you've fallen apart in in this year and a half, in the best sense. It it's it's a simple answer, and I I think it was um, Rick <clears throat> mentioned it once. Who used to be with you guys at F4CR, one of the interviews that we did with him, and you know that a lot of. A lot of people suffer from analysis paralysis. They go through the information, they see what's happening out there, and it really is paralyzing. And the way to get out of that is to do something. But the challenge there is, well, what do I do? And I was lucky because along came this film. So I learned about something that I didn't know anything about. And I, each day I learned a bit more, and each day I got a bit more confused, but other days I got less confused. <laughs> um, so I, I've been on a, uh, uh, a you know, a slightly tired high, <laughs> a little bit exhausted, but really uh, wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And um, in terms of um, it taking you over, has climate restoration taken you over like that we not only can, we shall do it. We shall make it happen, even if it is impossible. Yeah, I mean, we're a, we're a reactive society, not an active society or a reactive species, I think. And, you know, so often the the <clears throat> every catastrophe has a silver lining, even if it's short lived because it kicks kicks people's butts into action, I think. And um, the job of organizations like F4CR and, 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 and people like Peter is to get people into action without the catastrophe. Yeah, uh, as it, that shouldn't be an essential element. Um, I'm sorry, what was your question again? I, I kind of, I don't know. I'm moving on to my next one, and then I'm going to open the floor. And we're going, you know, we'll see. We'll go to the top of the hour, or five or ten minutes after, if we have questions that go beyond the top of the hour. But um, what was I going to say? Um, it's contagious. Well, you know, given that uh, you know. Um, 
do you have any do you have any advice for um you know as you said you're not an expert in the science i've found and i want to know if you have any tips because you talked about you talk to people who are deep and broad in science and all policy and all those kind of things but i've really i'm i'm still on a learning curve but of opening my mouth and stumbling people really appreciate i find if i um if i express my passion and listen deeply and also um bring into the conversation the possibility that we can restore the climate back to pre-industrial level or however i might say it and um any tips for people to not worry about that they don't know the science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because we all are gripped by that. I, I can't open my mouth until I have something pithy and, and brilliant to say. I, I think it boils down again to, I mean, I've, I've worked on a lot of different types of projects and you can't be an expert on anything. In fact, I'm not an expert on anything I've worked on. But you've, you've got to be able to understand the basic principles of it and avoid the temptation of, of, of stepping into BS. <laughs> avoid the temptation of trying to support your statement by a, a person that's not really into much that you're saying. They just want an argument or they just want to disagree. And just stick with what you know. Make sure that you understand the principles. If you don't understand the principles, then speak to people um that, that can help you with that until you under understand the basic underlying principles and then you can guide people um to where if, if they want to dig deeper and look at papers or whatever just point them in the, the right direction but don't fall for the um for the trap of of substantiating things that you don't quite understand beautiful information and now i'm really glad that carol douglas and peter fikowski who wrote the book have their hands up first and Carol, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks. I just wanted to enunciate for um, people who are not reading the chat. People are getting very excited. They want to know when and where will this be available? And if you're having any, if you have any screenings planned for San Francisco um, and so forth. Yeah, we um, Phoebe and I really uh, are reaching out to people. We had a, a great discussion just a short while ago with Carol England um, about the possibility of setting up a screening in in Petaluma. Um, we really want to hit San Francisco and actually a, a bunch of cities. So um, my email address, John at transmediavision.net, uh, any information or, or share with Carol um, Carol Douglas or Carol England um, and uh, Julia Diedra, um, if you've got questions and pass that on to me. But yeah, any, any ideas that you guys have got, but we we kind of need ambassadors as well. It's it's one thing to come up with a, it would be great to play in this city, but do you know people there, any contacts and stuff so that we can build an audience? Because the, 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 the film's a starter, it's to kickstart the conversation. Great. And Phoebe has just written in the chat, we will create a page for screenings on our website. And if you, if you know people and would like to organize a screening, you can uh, let Phoebe or John know. Okay, Peter. Very uh, quick question, which might turn into something interesting. Uh, in the movie, you had that little blip, that, that little graph with the blip. And I just love it. Is that available to us? And anything you want to say about that? Um, it's such a, yeah. Yeah, that's the, um, it, that's just a freeze of the the actual video animation. And it's the last 12,000 years, <clears throat> which is in, in, in your book, basically. I, I think it's that same graph. Um, so we just follow it along. And then obviously the last 12,000 years, it just takes off like a rocket. Um, so we we did that as a as a uh, I think I did it on on the newsletter that we sent out. There's a, a bit of an animated gift that we created, um, but things like that <clears throat> is something else that we can certainly share with uh, F4CR. Creating short little gifts that can be sent out in an email, 
and stuff like that because I, I think it's you know I, I don't want to say TikTok even though I just said it but we, yeah. we've, we've got to come up with short attention span quick things that it could be an animated gift that shows 800,000 years cycles and then a second one that shows the 12,000 years where it just goes along and then up like a, a rocket for the last couple of hundred years and people just get used to that they they it becomes part of the yeah. visual lexicon and, and john there, there's also the little one where it just goes up and then back down again and that's the thing that's unique that's something that no one ever sees yeah it that's very apt it, it, uh it's not abstract it's 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 kind of just um an illustration of it because i think uh I've got it going from you know pre pre industrial to like the nineteen twenties to uh, to current to projected and then down again and it's it, it shows what's possible. But wouldn't that be a cool T-shirt? And people you know with one or two words and then people say what is it? Because um, if that little visual because it's only it's a line with five points on it, mm -hmm. um, very simple visual could become the icon for restoring the climate. We, we had a variation of that, which was um, an ECG going along. And then it, it goes <laughs> up. So instead of flatlining, but that, that might be a bit counter counterproductive. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I anyway, like the, I, 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 the, the, the little one, that little tiny one, I'd love, because you've got a little, you, you showed it twice, I think, in your videos. Yeah. Yeah, all that I can export those and, and share them with people to to, to use. That'd be a pleasure. Yeah. Great. Uh, Joan, did you take your hand down and then I'll call on Victoria? I, I took my hand down because Carol Douglas asked the question that oh. I was going to ask. Great minds think alike. Victoria. Yeah, it's great. It's very exciting. Are there going to be local groups that people can join? Uh, because my, you know, my experience is you might get out of the film like that. If you have a piece of paper, you know, call so-and-so if you're interested in X, Y, Z, that kind of thing. And have a local groups. Is, is that part of the, the movement? The, my answer to that, Victoria, is that, um, and I, I think having this presentation to F4CR is a, a kind of poetry in motion, really, because we, um, we we don't want to be reinventing the wheel. There's the structures in place like F4CR um, that we can partner with. I think because we you know there's, <laughs> there's there's so little time. We've got to work out ways that we can synergize and and support each other and really um, leverage the information and the contacts that we've got. Great idea. One of the things you could do, unless. Um... There are local groups that want to sponsor it, obviously, then you talk to the people who organized it. But uh, wherever it is shown, that there be a list of various uh, regenerative organizations in the community that believe that there that we can regenerate the earth. I'm part of the bioregional movement, and you know, I think actually climate restoration is way more <laughs> clear about the intention than you know, uh, having people shift their point of view toward nature through bioregionalism and uh, creating a culture that is bioregional rather than political in the kind of arbitrary lines that were drawn, you know, how many years ago that constitute our counties and cities and towns, which are make solving problems of waterways and you know, so many different things that have to do with our land, uh, impossible. You know, one town does something, somebody else just, you know, cancels out the good that was done uh, inadvertently because they don't share data, that kind of thing. So I totally believe in that climate restoration future. And it sounds like you want to empower the, uh, and this is for Peter, really, or whoever, actually, I don't know, that you want to have the, the local groups all know about it and own it, own the film and the people that come to it. And, and also not be selfish because, you know, the, a certain particular group may not interest someone, but their people are interested in a whole range of things in the climate. And it should be 
you know, more, uh, less competitive of keeping, you know, pe members of your organization kind of thing. So that's a whole transformation we need to. Mm. Vic Victoria, that's really beautiful. And we'd love to talk to you further. And have you read the book yet? No, no, I didn't, didn't know. But Peter, I think it's great. I'm excited for you. And I'm excited for all of us. It's a very obvious concept. Isn't it? That's what's so, uh, it's like, it's like a no brainer once you hear it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you can go to peterfikowski.com and get the resources there, Short, shorter um, kind of draft papers, white papers to get more about the concept and um, put your name in the chat if you'd like to uh, connect further with us. And there's good stuff going on in the chat here. Um, Mill Valley, Sarasota Film Festival. We would love for people to uh, step up if you've got connections to any of those. Robin, yes. Hi. Oh, hi. hi. I, I just wanted to um, talk because I've got a really interest in 10 to 14 year olds. I'm also already working in that space now. I've shifted it to climate change and just wondered whether I could talk to somebody re, that's got a real interest in that area. Um, yeah, and really talk to them. Because what, what I'm hearing with all this is it's, you know, really making climate change sexy, which I think is really great and really hip and good for that eight. Well, not that, not that they really want that, but, you know, it's really, that's what's, um, and that they call to action straight away. So if you've got anyone about that, that would be great. Absolutely. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, Robin, have you put your information into the chat? Contact? I will do that. Well, I'm, on an, I'm on an iPhone. I think Peter has my oh. um, contact details, but I'll try and just put it. Do you do it to Phoebe or to the whole chat? Or who do I do who will I put my contact uh, details chat, to? The whole chat is fine if you can. I don't know how you do it on a phone. That's no, neither do I. Pay, Never right? mind. I'll have a go. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Robin. Hey, Robin. Yes. Uh, it's Joan Bordeaux. I have your number. I'll call you. Great. Thanks, Joan. Thanks. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions or insights from this for you that you'd like to share? takeaways you've gotten out of this? Well, I think we may be complete today. Well, we, we wanna tell people about our next founder series speaker. And we'd all, if, if you're new, if you've never been on an F4C or a call before, we would love it if you would put your name your email address and your phone number in the chat so we can contact you and tell you what else we have available. Yep, and we have weekly calls too. We have weekly calls. The weekly community leader calls where people share what they're up to. Um, you know, this, is, this isn't a... Uh, uh, an uh, top-down organization that's been around forever. We're we're all people who've gotten turned on by the idea of climate restoration and want to be part of a community that's thinking together. You know how our neurons work when we converse together about a new idea and and actions come to us. Yes, Ray. So just a quick comment. I'd like to say that. I've really enjoyed this presentation and I look forward to seeing the four films as they come out. No, great. Thanks, Ray. Mark? I, uh, I just wanted to say, I really appreciate how John is framing the issue, uh, not just in terms of the hard facts, but um, kind of the heart and soul of all of us. You know, it, it, that you're, you're calling forth that um, this affects all of us deeply emotionally and, and kind of at every level of our being. Mm. And uh, I so love having this movement, this initiative coming from all of these places. Mm. 
I, I just really appreciate that aspect of the, the filmmaking and your languaging, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Mark, thank you for pointing to that. Andre? Good evening. Do you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, th I'm happy to be part of this meeting. Uh, that the first time I join. I am uh, from Panama, and this month I have updated uh, the Wikipedia article about climate restoration and about the biography of uh, Peter uh, with the help of Carol, with the information provided by Carol. I'm very happy for that. But m my question is here, and uh, it's an open question. <clears throat> if I write blogs about uh, governmental action, across the world, because I work, work for an international organization. If a government want to implement or improve its program of carbon fee and dividend and carbon sequestration, where do they find experts who are able to provide that to them at an international level? Maybe you and Peter or you and Peter and Carol ought to have a, com a conversation about that. Peter, any uh, short words on that? Oh, my short word is thank you for asking. No one has asked that before. And um, we'll come up with a good answer by next month. Hopefully before. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Jane. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say thank you for the work. And I see so many people have said that, but really and truly, um, thank you, John. And thank you, Phoebe, for doing this kind of work all over and getting the word out. And I do love the word climate restores and climate restoration. There's something that's really empowering about that word. It's not doom and gloom. You feel like there is... Um, you know, we're it's the climate is being restored. Thank you. Mm -hmm, great. And I do want to get it to the Sarasota Film Festival some way. I just saw it. So please think about that. You it's will do it. Day. She will do it. Yeah, absolutely. I guarantee you, Jane Grambush will make that happen. Joe Ramey. Hi, yeah. Thank you for the conversation. This is my first time here, and it's been a delight. Um, my question is about reaching the people that wouldn't normally be on a call like this, um, because that's kind of like the vast majority of people. We're kind of just like, you know, in our phones, doing our thing. And, you know, my interest in participating in this conversation is a lot around social media and how we can really impact people like the masses, right? Um, and you said something about sharing and like sharing something that like, that like touches your heart about this project. Now I'm very like formula, kind of want to know how to do the thing and like what you think, you know, especially the filmmaker that you are, how would you go about formulating uh, a message so people can understand what you're passionate about, what we're talking about, and then also like um, have a call to action and maybe create their own video and then share it themselves and have the making of the video be the thing, you know, like in the way that we share. But I'm just curious your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I, thanks Thanks for the question. I mean, you, you, you're pretty much echoing what I was suggesting in a way in terms of F4CR. Um, we've, we've made four films or we're making four films and they're statements, but we need conversation. And the best way to get conversation rolling is by these short clips uh, that we put out on social media and that there has to be a lot of them because you can't just have one one short video that you know it's wonderful it's great whatever and then it evaporates because the social media has got such a voracious appetite that it's it's moving on to the next thing before you've even finished the first thing so you've got to create viewing patterns you've got to create a kind of a loyalty even though people aren't really loyal but you've got to create a reason for them to to come back and so whatever it is that you're making, because there's no shortage of information, there's no shortage of gimmicks and stuff, you've got to be authentic. Um, you don't necessarily have to have all the answers. You've just got to have the right questions in many cases and be honest about how it's making you feel and what would make you feel better. And so it's 
you know, it's the heart and the soul and, and the statistics as well. And it's finding that kind of sweet spot between those different elements, sharing those and being consistent with that and creating a, a constant feed once a week, once every two weeks or whatever it is, or every day, if you've got a, a you know, an organization that's uh, big enough to do that. Um, but it is, it's going to be on the small bite-sized bits of information that this film's got loads of. Um, it, it, each of those statements does need book ending. Um, I, I mentioned as an example, carbon credits or greenwashing. And just saying, I, I don't get it. I, you know, there's all this information, there's this money flying around and the Inflation Reduction Act. And now there's a direct air capture company and um, Wyoming being built for hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't get it. How, how does this even work? I, I don't understand Bitcoin and I don't understand carbon credits. <laughs> Where do I go with that? And I think just being candid um, in what you know and what you don't know and what that journey of discovery is, people will connect with that. Mm. Joan, maybe we could um, do uh, one of our Wednesday calls could be a practice making your own videos, your own um, one minute videos. We'll see. We'll Let's we'll definitely that. do that. Yeah, that's great. Okay, Joe, is that it? And Joan, okay. Uh, I, I just want to remind people about our next speaker, who mm. is Sam, Sam Daly Harris, and that'll be on Valentine's Day. And uh, Sam just published a new book, which is called um, uh, Reclaiming Our Democracy, Healing the Break Between People and Government. He's the founder of Results. He's awesome. Um, we only have awesome people like John Bowie and Peter Fakowski <laughs> on, on the Founder Series on Wednesdays. Uh, I think, uh, Dennis Garrity, you will be the last person, and then Julia will close the meeting. Yeah, I'm Oh, Ayala. Let's let Ayala speak, too, okay? Just quickly, um, okay. Yeah, very right. quick. I just wanted to thank you, Joan, for mentioning uh, Sam speaking next month. I just wanted to clarify that the uh, actually the 2024 edition of the book has a different title. So I want to make sure people, if they're looking for the book, it's Reclaiming Our Democracy, Every Citizen's Guide to Transformational Advocacy. And the website is reclaimingourdemocracy.com. And you can find links uh, about the book and how to purchase it. It was uh, published yesterday um, in anticipation of Sam being on the call next month. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for <laughs> this presentation. Thanks, it was Isla. Mm. Beautiful. I see that Dennis has a question as well. Dennis Garrity. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, such a great pleasure to meet you, John, and benefit from your wisdom. Um, as you may know, I work with Phoebe, uh, Peter, and Julia on several big global initiatives related to climate restoration, including a global pledge on accelerating carbon removals and uh, the Global Evergreening uh, Alliance and its campaign and the Global Restoration Collaborative that, that Phoebe has championed. And I've been experiencing some amazingly articulate youth expressions and engagement in making it clear to humanity that um, uh, the old folks are completely failing and that they're okay. asking the question, what's the plan? Because there is no plan to, um, to actually uh, take us back to, um, to true uh, climate restoration. And I've been wondering whether you might have been considering a fifth film in your series that features these very thoughtful youth voices mm -hmm. that are telling us some very important things. Gosh, I, I think there's no, uh, I, I probably need therapy if I go for a fifth one, but <laughs> <laughs> there's, mm -hmm. there's no there's no shortage of subjects. And I, I, I think, you know, it's like a house you started, but you never really finish it. Um, it looks like we'll be coming over to the Philippines to um, do some work on the um, ocean permaculture uh, yeah. con um, so it would be great to catch up with you, but even before then, uh, maybe getting some recordings of, uh, of youth making those statements would be great. Yeah. And would be great. Very good. John, final words from you, and then we'll sign off. Uh, that's I great. Put my uh, hand up. Oh, I, I'm, 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 
Joan said that we were going to end after Dennis. So yeah, we've already gone way over time. So okay. um, John, to you. Okay. Yeah. Just, just yeah. Thanks for um, thanks for putting up with me for forty minutes. I appreciate that. I really do. And uh, <laughs> we'll be connecting with you all again in in the near future. I'm sure there's a lot of collaboration that we can work on. Oh, thank you so much, John. Thank you much, Phoebe. And thank you all for being here and making up the audience for this. Thank See you, you next week. See you next month.